This is section 11.10, which is on Dalton's Law. Uh, Dalton's Law is very simple. Uh, probably the easiest of all of the gas laws. Uh, they're all easy, but, uh, but really, if you were, let me give you a scenario. If I had a mixture of gases, let's say I have uh, hydrogen and nitrogen gas in a, in a balloon, and there is a pressure on that balloon. There's a pressure that's making that balloon expand because there's gas inside the balloon. If I were to snap my fingers and all the hydrogen go away, what would happen to the pressure in the balloon? Okay, so if there's no hydrogen now, then that hydrogen was not pressing against the, the edges of the balloon, then the balloon would have less pressure in it. Okay, so what Dalton's law says is that the pressures of a mixture of gas is simply the individual pressures added together. So if you have hydrogen gas at two pascals and oxygen gas at two pascals, and you put them both into the same balloon, the pressure in that balloon will be four pascals. Two of them contributed from each of the gases. And that's what it is. So that means you have to have a, an add you have to have adding in your formula, okay? So it would be the pressure that each gas would exert if it were by itself. That's all it is. That's the partial pressure. That means that you're going to have to have the total pressure, simply each of these individual gas pressures that add up, right? And um, you can extract them as if they were by themselves. They behave just like they were by themselves. But when they're together, they add up so that the total pressure is the sum of all of them, okay? So if you had a, a tank with two atmospheres of gas, um, helium and two, four atmospheres of gas, argon, and you mix them together, then the two would still exert the two, and the four would still exert the four, and they add up to give you a pressure of six. That's what you would have, okay? Nice and easy. So for a practicality, a scuba diver, um, if you go really, really far under the ocean, it's not just the atmospheric pressure pushing on you, but the water is pushing on you. That high pressure causes nitrogen to dissolve in your blood, okay? And what happens is if you now are in the deep ocean and you've got uh, dissolved nitrogen from your body cells in your blood, and now you come up quickly back to the surface, like if you just swam up to the surface, then that nitrogen would immediately come out because you're not under high pressure anymore. The closer you get to the surface, the lower the pressure gets, and that those bubbles would come out in your blood, and you would get a condition called the bends to where you couldn't even move. Like your nerves won't even work, your muscles won't work because you've got nitrogen gas bubbles all throughout your body. Okay. I wouldn't want the disease, but I guess you could eventually get rid of it, but, but oh, it'd be awful that day. Okay, So what, what is the partial pressure of the one? Okay, So if a scuba tank, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I never told you the rest. What you do instead is you add, you're going to add helium to your tank to increase that pressure so that the nitrogen doesn't go into your blood. Okay, that's what you do. So when you're breathing in, even, even though you don't need helium, okay, I guess it makes your voice funny, but you don't need helium, but what you're doing is you're mixing that helium with the oxygen just to increase the pressure so that the pressure in your, uh, in your scuba tank is equal to the pressure of the ocean pushing on you, and it doesn't allow the nitrogen to go into your blood. That way you don't get the condition. It's just a way to fix it by mixing the gases, okay? So their question was, scuba tank contains oxygen at a certain pressure and helium at another pressure. What's the total pressure? Well, if these two were in the same units, all you do is add them together. But they are cranky, so you're going to have to either change millimeters of mercury into atmospheres or atmospheres into millimeters of mercury, and then once they're together, you simply add them up. So that's what they did. They took atmospheres, turned it into millimeters of mercury, and then these two numbers you add, and that's what you end up, uh, that's what you end up being. For some dives, scuba divers use a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen called nitrox in eight atmosphere tank. 
okay, an eight pressure tank. So if the oxygen has 290 millimeters of mercury, what's the other? Well, all I'm going to do is subtract this from the original. So I have to put eight atmospheres as millimeters of mercury, find out what that is, and then subtract 2190, then whatever the other is left over. So eight atmospheres is 6080, and then 6080 minus the oxygen gives you whatever the other is. Now practically in a chemistry lab, if you're ever going to make gases, how do you catch that gas? That's the problem. If you were to make it in a test tube, it would simply bubble up through the, through the test tube and into the air. If you were to make it in a beaker, it would just bubble up through the beaker and be lost in the atmosphere, in, in the room air. So if you're going to try to trap that, the way you would trap it is you bubble it through gas or through water. You make a little, a little tube from whatever, wherever the chamber that's making the gas, and then that tube goes through water and bubbles up through water. Okay, so here is a, here's a test tube where there's a reaction happening, gas is being produced, the gas is sent down through water and then up into a jar. Now originally the jar had no air at all. It was all water, so you submerge the jar and kind of lift it up so that the water's all the way up to the top, there's no gas at all. Then when the gases go in, it forces the water back out into the pan, and this is all gas. But you have to realize, when you put it through the water, when you opened it through the water, and there's water here, what you did is you gave some of this water molecules liquid enough energy to escape into the gas stage. And so some, a very small amount, but some of the gas, you can see here's a water, here's a water, here's a water. Some of the gas that's in this gas chamber is actually water vapor. So you have to take that in consideration when you figure out how much gas you actually made, because some of that's water. Now you cool it back down and the water is simply going to drop back down out of it. But as you made it, some of that is gas, uh, or some of that gas is water. So you have to take that into consideration. So as you break something apart and you collect it over water, how many moles are produced? Okay. Now this is, this is normally something you just look up in the book. The partial pressure of water at a certain degrees is 18 millimeters of mercury. So what you do is you find your total pressure at the end of your problem and then subtract 18. Okay, at that temperature, whatever that room temperature is, you subtract 18 and then the rest of it is the partial pressure of whatever gas you collected. Okay, that's just, it's called collecting over water. That's all it is. Okay, so you're going to take the total pressure is the water plus the gas. So the gas is going to be the total pressure minus the water. So you take the total pressure, which you had, subtract 18, and this is your now your gas pressure. This is the pressure of the gas that you, that you did, okay? Now, PV equals NRT, once you know the pressure, you're gonna use the pressure uh, in a regular uh, ideal gas law to find what you're wanting. So you wanted to know um, how many moles you collected? Well, that's PV equals an RT. So you found what the pressure of the gas was. Remember, you had to subtract the water from the total pressure. The leftover pressure was this P, uh, which was here. And then you just put the rest in plug and chug, and you end up solving for the number of moles of gas. Okay. The air you breathe is a mixture. Okay, mostly nitrogen, about 70 something percent nitrogen, 20 something percent oxygen, tiny little bit of other stuff. Okay, it's a mixture. So 78 nitrogen, 21 oxygen, a little bit of argon, a little bit of water vapor, add it up, that's your percentage. Okay, so what you're breathing out is what you breathed in. You're breathing out carbon dioxide gas because your body made that as you broke down your food. You breathe a little bit of water vapor because that's, you know, that's part of the air that you breathe is water. You've made it a little warmer. And a lot of times when you breathe out and there's smoke coming from your mouth, okay, when in the winter time, that's water vapor. That's the steam that comes off of out of your mouth when you're breathing into cold air. 
and then the rest is simply the partial pressure of these gases that make up air. Air is a mixture of gases, okay? Now, when you are breathing, the cool thing when you do this in anatomy is whatever there is more pressure of, that it is what travels. So for instance, if you take a breath and there's more oxygen that you're breathing, then you have more oxygen that'll go into your body cells. If there's more carbon dioxide in your body cells where you just produce that carbon dioxide as met metabolic uh, waste gas, then that will go into your blood. So whatever there's more of will go out. So the high, it goes from high concentration to low. So when you take a deep, breath, a deep breath and there's lots of oxygen in your air, that oxygen goes into your blood and immediate goes into the cells. And then the carbon dioxide that's in your cells goes into your blood because it's higher pressure in your cells than in your blood, and it'll go into your blood. Then when you breathe out, there's more uh, carbon dioxide in your blood than in, in your lung, so it'll go into your lung. So you take a deep breath and you're breathing in mostly oxygen, you exhale and you're breathing out mostly carbon dioxide. That's just awesome. I just think that's so cool, okay, because it's partial pressure. It's wherever you have the most pressure, okay? So oxygen flows into the teacher, uh, tissues because partial pressure is higher in the blood. Wherever it's higher, it moves away from high concentration into low. And then the carbon dioxide is higher in the body tissues, lower in the blood, so it moves into the blood. And then the same thing happens in the lung. It's higher in the blood, it goes into the lung. And then once it's in the lung, you simply exhale and all of that carbon dioxide comes out with it. All right, so we'll work together on this. I hope this chapter was fun.